Misinformation in regards to solar or any renewable energy is one of our biggest hurdles. Contact North Carolina State University, the University of Virginia, Virginia Tech, Georgia Tech, Ohio State University, Ohio University, Indiana University. Go somewhere that is really reputable and get good information. These are the questions that are normally asked as far as land requirements for a solar farm. Everybody always asks, what's the criteria that we need to put a solar farm in place. If we build a solar farm, the power has to have somewhere to go. So we look at substations, we look at transmission lines to see if there is availability to put power into that grid. We can be within a couple of miles of these areas, so you don't have to be right next door. We can make it work. Once we find that infrastructure, what do we look for in land? We look for the same thing a farmer looks for. We want good cleared land that's open to sunlight. Um, we need for it to be contiguous, but it doesn't always work that way. We can take 100 acres, string an overhead transmission line to 200 acres, and we can weave it together so that we have enough land to make our project viable. One of the big questions that people ask a lot is what makes a landowner interested in working with a solar company? I started this in 2014 and I dealt with a lot of farmers and landowners that said, Jim, I don't have any problems with solar, but I'm making a nice living farming. I don't want to change. I'm 56 years old. Uh, 2016 and 2015 are the worst two farming years I have ever seen in my life. My phone started to ring again from these landowners saying, Jim, I've got to diversify. Mother Nature has beat me down for the last two years. I've got to do something to help provide for my family. Um, so they look at it as an opportunity to continue to farm. They'll diversify. If they want to put 100 acres in, that's great. If they want to put 1,000 acres in, we do that. Uh, one of the things that's very important that I try and tell everybody we work with landowners. We can't come in and condemn their land and take it. It has to be a mutual agreement between a solar company and a landowner. A lot of guys are looking at it that they can create a legacy for their family. The average age of a farmer in North Carolina and Virginia in particular is 57 years old. You're not seeing young people come into farming. It's a hard life. Farmers tell their kids, Go to college, get an education, work in the medical field, have something stable. So the family farm is kind of a thing of the past. And what happens is when the family passes away, the farm is sold. And a lot of these older farmers that the land has been in their family for generations, they want to keep it in the family. And this is a way that it stays in the family. Even though they're uh, utilizing some of it, they still have the woodlands that they can fish and hunt and farm if they want to. So it really gives the landowner an opportunity to create a legacy and hold on to their land. What are typical lease rates per acre for land? There's not a specific price. I've seen it go from $350 an acre to $800 an acre. Land values vary from where they are. You have areas closer to say Raleigh, North Carolina, the capital that the land costs are very expensive. We can't put a solar farm there because we can't afford the land, which is why we look to more rural farm areas. We lease land as well as buy land. What I tell folks at the end of the day, it is their land, it's their decision. What are the lengths of leases? Our leases normally range from 20 to 40 years. Right now, the warranty on solar panels is 25 years. So basically, I would say you would definitely be looking at a farm being in place for 25 years. What protections are in place to protect landowners? Well, one of the things I always tell every landowner is contact an attorney. Get them to go over the land lease so that they know exactly what's going on uh, because that protects them as well as us. And we work together on that. We have to get a conditional use permit or a special use permit from local counties. We have to put an erosion program together or a sedimentation control plan together that has to be approved by the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. Then you have the Department of Environmental Quality that comes in to make sure we are not destroying the land in any way other than putting a post in the ground or putting a fence up, that it's not gonna run off and destroy a stream or a river. When you have the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers and the Department of Environmental Quality looking at everything you do, it's gonna be done right. One of the questions is who typically buys the projects when these things are completed? 
is somebody that has a large appetite for power. Amazon, Facebook, Google, that have these large data centers. You have companies that just want to use renewable energy. Also, you have utility companies, Duke Power, Dominion, AEP. Who looks after the projects once they're completed? You will have technicians and inspectors, depending on the size, that come by on a regular basis. You also have a NOC, which is a network operations control center that monitors the project 24 seven. So if you have a string of solar panels, for some reason that is not producing the amount of power it's supposed to produce, they'll get an alarm and these guys will go out and check it to make sure that it's all right. It may just be a loose connection. It could be uh, a bad panel. They'll go out, disconnect, replace the panel. So these projects are monitored 24-7. Uh, One of the other major questions people ask a lot are solar equipment and facilities safe. As far as the panels themselves, there's no gas inside, there are no liquids. It's basically aluminum, steel, and silica. So yes, they are very safe. You also, one of the big questions is, do solar projects devalue adjoining landowners? One of the things we have found, we do have a real estate appraisal group uh, that has actual, I think it's seven years now of actual studies that show that when you put a solar farm in, it does not devalue the land right beside it. Basically, a solar farm is a nice, quiet neighbor. There is no noise, there is no smell. It just sits there and does its job quietly and efficiently. What happens at the end when a solar farm is no longer needed? We have to put a decommissioning plan in place that ensures that the project and the facility will be removed and that it will be put back to the way it was before. It's harder to put the piles in the ground than it is to take them out. So it, it's pretty easy to remove and put the land back into use. Uh, the way I look at it, the land underneath is growing grass the entire time. Once you take the facility out, you go and turn the land, it would be just like taking a dairy farm that goes out of business where cows have been on the pasture and you go and put it back in the row crop, if that's what the landowner wants to do. It's very simple. It's not a very complicated process. That's it. If you've got any questions, genexsolar.com and ask a question, or you can go to the Center for Energy Education Center and send a question and somebody will be glad to respond to you. Thank you and have a good rest of the day.